Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Scott's Comics Retro Review. And this channel is uh, dedicated to people who want to get into comics but they're not sure exactly where to begin. I'm going to be recommending some good stuff. Or they are reading comics and they just haven't read what I'm currently reviewing. <laughs> so again, I would say go ahead and buy this. There is a method to my madness, so I would suggest going back to my first video and kind of working your way through it. You know, just or you can just pick and choose, however you want to do it's fine. But um, right now I'm currently doing my fourth favorite superhero, which is Superman. And you, won't, I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of Superman videos after this, because to me, John Byrne's run on Superman was the best run on Superman. He came in after Crisis and. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Arts is another video I'm going to do down the road, but it it, it kind of wiped out a lot of Superman's past. Um, and I, I've been going through all of his trades. He had been on the book about two years, two and a half years, and these are the different stories that he's done in that time. And right now we're up to this particular trade. Um, I wanted to go through this real quick. And um, the, the first one, the first story in here has to do with uh, uh, Checkmate. Checkmate, what happened was that Superman, uh, John Byrne was writing and drawing two books a month. Um, he was doing two books a month. And the Action Comics book was a team-up book. And uh, in this one, he teams him up with Checkmate, who I don't think anyone had really heard of Checkmate before, but the series was being launched and was created by, by Byrne and his friend called Paul Kupperberg. This checkmate was created by Paul Kupperberg and uh, John Byrne. And I'm kind of noticing, like, at this point, he'd been on the book, on both of those books, and, and started writing The Adventures of Superman. And he'd been doing it for, like, two and a half years at this point, two years, over two years and two and a half years. And I started noticing he was doing things. Like, in this particular one, he kind of did the layouts, and he left um, the inking on the filling in of the regular stuff on um, Ty Templeton to fill in. Now, Ty Templeton is a good artist in his own right, but uh, he wasn't, um, John Byrne wasn't doing the full pencils is the point I wanted to get to. I actually didn't follow Checkmate into his own book, but Superman, um, the Superman book was done, was very well done. I don't want to, I don't want to reveal too much as usual <laughs> on what happens inside the story. Now, when we come to this Superman, uh, Superman was the second book uh, John Byrne was doing, and it was written and drawn by John Byrne. In this case, it's inked by the great um, Carl Kessel. And it's kind of a funny cover. You have the pranks to come in here, and he's got to kick me hard. <laughs> uh, sign on the back of Superman's cape. It was, um, it was one of those things that that uh, the pranks is a villain that was created in the Silver Age, and Superman was bringing some of those old villains back, not all of them, but some of them, he was bringing them back slowly but surely, and kind of updating them for current times. And the prankster is one of those villains you can't really do a whole lot with because he's just really a prankster. <laughs> now we're over here to Adventures of Superman, and as you can see, it says by Byrne, Ordway, and Beatty. And Beatty was the anchor, Ordway was the penciler, and I mean, just look at how gorgeous uh, Ordway's art is and uh, teaming up with Beatty's inks now it says here that they co-plotted the story and uh, John Burns the writer and uh, Jerry Ordway's the anchor now my understanding of what happened was is John Byrne would uh, Jerry Ordway would write the plot and send it into John and John would just make any changes to help the flow of the continuity so that between the three books it wouldn't mess up like you wouldn't have mistakes made between the three books they would just continually flow well that was my understanding of it and then once Jerry Ottaway did the pencils then John Byrne went ahead and he put the words in everyone's mouths and that's what a scripter does and again I don't want to reveal too much now we're into action comics and again I was I was telling you that I could kind of see where uh, John was kind of I guess kind of getting tired a little bit he, he he always wrote and drew, you know, all of the stories in his two books. And here he's got Ross Andrew doing the, um, doing the penciling, and Keith Williams was doing the background inks. 
See, John Byrne did the story and he did the figure inks. So, in other words, Jerry Ordway would uh, draw this. I'm sorry, Ross and Drew would draw this and John Byrne would ink this. And then, like the, the walls in the back here, Ross and Drew would draw and Keith Williams would ink. So, he kind of did the background stuff and all the figures were done, were inked by John Byrne. Now, I want to talk a bit about um, Ross and Drew uh, really briefly. He's somebody I'm going to do more on down the road his uh, spider-man is a large part of my childhood and for some reason a lot of people don't include him as a, a great spider-man artist he's they kind of underrate him and i'm going to do more spider-mans and this will be and one of them i'll be touching on ross andrew's artwork but anyway he was also at dc for a really long time and he's his work is associated with the metal man so i'm sure that's one of the reasons why mr Byrne brought him in he wanted to work with this guy with Ross Andrew, um, but also at the same time, he's doing less pencils. <laughs> anyway, now we have, we're back to here, where we have, uh, this is by John Byrne, and it's a Superman book, and in this case, he's pretty much doing um, everything, um, which is very interesting. So he kind of like took a little break there, and then he came back and he started working even more. You know, he's doing all the inks and everything. Uh, and he's bringing back the Silver Banshee, who I had mentioned previously was an underused character. I haven't seen too much of her um, since, well, occasionally, but it's been decades since this book was made. So I, I'm thinking she should have been in there more. <laughs> but anyway, uh, interesting character. And then we come over here to uh, Adventures of Superman. And um, it says script to co-plotter. Jerry Ordway is the uh, co-plotter and the penciler. And I believe the relationship hadn't changed at this point. It was still basically the same. And uh, just look at this beautiful uh, Jerry Ordway artwork. <laughs> I just love the guy. I'm going to do other videos on Jerry Ordway. Now we come up to Action Comics number 600. And this is something that had been building up. I didn't show you, but in, the, in a lot of the previous stories, uh, John Byrne was building up to his meeting with Superman's meeting with Wonder Woman. And this is a whole new version from Crisis, where the first time they met was in Legends. And I talked about Legends in one of my previous uh, videos. I think the second one with John Byrne on Superman. Um, but they've been building up to the Superman um, and meeting with Wonder Woman. And George Perez, um, who's involved with this book, uh, George Perez, who's involved with this book, he um he was writing and drawing Wonder Woman, so because of that, he ended up coming in with. He was also building up to this meeting, and then they finally had a meet, and it begins with a kiss. <laughs> it's very interesting, um, and the way they did it is John Byrne basically wrote the story, and I'm sure uh, George had some input on the plot. I'm not sure why he wasn't given co-plotting credit. I, I don't know exactly how they broke down this issue but it says that John Byrne did the story and then he did the breakdowns which means he was he was drawing everything but he wasn't finishing it and then George Perez came in and he he inked over the pencils and finished it so when I look at this I actually see both John Byrne and George Perez in it um, it kind of looks like uh, something George Perez would draw but also something that John Byrne would draw so to me it was a it was a great um, combination of the two these two are, are um, high on my list <laughs> I don't I don't want to reveal too much but they end up going to Olympus and they play around with the perspective a lot and Superman's powers don't work right he's trying to use his uh, x-ray vision and he sees the back of his head because <laughs> it's it's magic based uh, look at that artwork right there and uh, I didn't want to reveal who the villain was but unfortunately I, I did by mistake but it does it won't ruin the story for you they end up going ahead and fighting uh, Darkseid, who is one of the new gods. And the Olympians were like children of the new gods. They, they kind of explain everything in him. Uh, Superman flying and he, he lands. <laughs> he flies into a wall. Anyway, the rest of the issue was written by, was also written by John Byrne. But he brought in a lot of special guest stars. Uh, he's got Kurt Schaffenberger drawing the Lois Lane portion of the story. And... Uh, Kurt Schaffenberger drew Lois Lane for many years in her book during the Silver Age called Lois Lane, 
uh, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. So it was uh, fitting that they brought her in to do this um, the, f the 60th anniversary. Was it the 60th anniversary? I just I just had it and I forgot. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh his 50th anniversary is the f year he's been at this point he's been published for 50 years anyway then there's a um i guess you can call it a lex luther story you can also call it a captain maggie sawyer story because they're both in it with uh art by dick giordano i, I don't think i'm going to do a video specifically on dick giordano but his name's going to pop up a lot he was one of the greats um and he mostly did inks uh, which is why I probably won't, I haven't really thought about doing a video only on inkers, <laughs> but, uh, I, I figured if I was doing a review on the book, I could talk about the inker while I'm doing a review. In either case, he did the pencils and inks here. He was also executive editor of DC comics at the time. So he was one of the big bosses and he, of course he does a great job penciling. Then we come into the next story, which is a Jimmy Olsen story. So what John is doing is he's going through like the whole Superman family for this uh, special anniversary edition of Action Comics. It's written by John Byrne, or I should say plotted by John Byrne, and the script is by Roger Stern, who I had mentioned before in previous videos. Roger Stern is one of my favorite writers, and the, the drawing is by Kurt Swan. And I was talking earlier in one of my previous videos about Superman, how I would buy the book based on the covers and all of the interior work, not all of the cover work, but all the interior work was done by Kurt Swan. He is one of the greats in the industry and many people know him as the Superman artist. Anyway, uh, then we move into uh, the next one, which is a Superman and Man Bat story. And it's drawn by Mike Magnolia. And this is some of the earliest work I've seen by Mike. I'm not sure where else I've seen him before this. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But my understanding was, too, that this is where the friendship between Mike and John had uh, grown. And eventually, a couple of years in the, into the 90s, they, uh, they, with a bunch of other superstars, I mentioned one called Art Adams from earlier, they all get together and form an imprint company line inside Dark Horse called Legend. And um, Mike Magnolia, what he's famous for is that in that imprint line, he created a character called Hellboy. And some of you may have seen the previous movies. There's a new movie coming out, but Hellboy is a character that Mike Magnolia created. created. And then uh, we move on to the next issue. And uh, look, it's by Byrne and Magnolia again. <laughs> So in this case, um, Byrne is not uh, drawing the book. He just did the story. So it tells you he's kind of, he's like backing off a little bit. Like he, he'll back off and let somebody else do. Maybe he needed just to just go on vacation. But he'll let somebody else draw a book and then he'll come back. You know, he'll have somebody draw two books while he writes the story. And then he'll come back and somebody else will um, come along and, then he'll come when he comes back. I mean, excuse me, he'll do everything. He'll do inks, pencils, you know, the artwork. Anyway, I wanted to also mention that this was the last issue of Action Comics that Mr. Byrne did. At that point, uh, they canceled Action Comics and then brought it back as a weekly. And you would, it would, had 48 pages in it and it had different uh, characters starring in there Green Lantern being one of them, Superman being another one of them. And Superman would have like two pages an issue. Needless to say, I never bought any of those issues. I just kind of dropped it because to me, Superman, uh, Action Comics is Superman. <laughs> if you're going to do other guest stars in it, then you make it a thicker issue and put the guest stars in the back like this issue number 60 was. Uh, the 50th anniversary was, issue 600. Anyway, I hope you liked the review. This is Scott's Comics Retro Review, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.